It's good to be with you, Ozark Family Church. Would you help us sing? Let's worship the Lord and enjoy His presence tonight as we sing and take communion. Help us sing. Blood. 
blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white. Father in heaven, we thank you that the blood of Jesus washes white as snow. Oh, there's power in the blood. Power in the blood of Jesus. It'll never lose its power. And thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for that promise that you hear our prayer and you're answering our prayer right now in heaven and interceding for us as children of God. And as we enter into this time of the service where we take the Lord's Supper, a time to remember, may we just be mindful so much, Lord, of what you did for us. And may we take the moment right now just to examine our own hearts. And Lord, right now, if there's anything in our lives that are against your will, that, that we're being disobedient in, or if we're holding any sin in our lives, we just confess it to you right now, individually and as a church, cleanse us from all sin. Wash us in the blood of Jesus. And thank you that you promised that you will do that. Now as we've examined ourselves and we pray that we have asked for forgiveness and we're clean in your sight because of this blood that you shed at Calvary. I pray we now will enter into the Lord's Supper in a moment of appreciation and gratitude and in remembrance and what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, it's good to be with you again tonight in the house of the Lord. Before we get into the service of taking of the Lord's Supper, I want to just mention a few announcements to you, if you'll just give me the time here. The OFC Ladies Ministry is hosting a ladies virtual tea this Saturday, May the 10th, or May the 9th at 10 a.m. on OFC Ladies' Facebook page or on YouTube. The speakers are Chelsea Harper and Rhonda Sexton. That's this Saturday, May the 9th at 10 a.m. I hope you'll tune in for that, and it'll be a blessing to you. And then tomorrow, May the 7th, is National Day of Prayer. So pray for our nation and pray for America that we might experience revival in our land. We desperately need it. I, I know that if you're a believer at all, you know that we are living in the last days. So let's just pray for revival to be poured out on our land and our country. And then we're excited to announce that we are reopening with a welcome back service Sunday, May the 17th here in Ozark at our church building. And we will be having a 9.30 a.m. 9.30 a.m. traditional service and then 11 a.m. contemporary service. Uh, Brother Chuck uh, will be mentioning more about that this coming Sunday in more details. So be sure to check out uh, the website and our social media platform. And so at this time, again, let's just ask the Lord's blessing on the Lord's Supper and a time to remember. Father, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for this time that we can just deep, deeply go into your word and just commune with you and commune with one another. And we ask your blessing upon every one of our church family members and those at Ozark uh, that are looking on tonight and the Heritage Campus and anyone else that might be with us. Bless we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I thought about this passage of Scripture, and I, I titled it, A Time to Remember. And it's a time to remember several things that I want to mention to you tonight. The first thing I think of is the Lord said to remember His death. 
Now that might seem odd, but I think that we need to be reminded of what He did for us at Calvary. That He gave His life for us and shed His blood. And what a precious thing that someone would do this for us who are sinners, who are unworthy and undeserving, but He did. And God the Father would only accept the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. He would only accept His Son with sinless blood paying for our sins that we might be righteous in a holy God's presence. And so we're thankful. We're so thankful. And we want to serve Him, not because we have to. Listen tonight, don't serve Him because you're told to. But serve Him out of the gratitude you have for what He has done for you when He suffered and when He was whipped and scourged and He was spit upon and beat upon and the crown of thorns placed upon His head and the nails put in His hands and His feet. And because He was human, He felt the pain for you and He, he bore all your sin and the sin of the whole world. And they nailed Him to that cross and He was raised up. And He did it because He loved you. And you serve Him not because you have to or told to, but because you want to. Because you love Him. And that will always help you through the good times and the bad times to be motivated to serve the Lord. So the Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23, the Apostle Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. The bread that we take of tonight represented his body on the cross of Calvary. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So let's partake of this bread right now. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. And then the Bible says in verse 25, After the same manner also he took the cup after he had eaten, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. So tonight, you and I are remembering his death out of gratitude of what he's done for us. Never, never take the Lord for granted and always appreciate the price that he paid by shedding his blood for the payment of your sins so that you could be forgiven. Let's drink together. Again, thank you, Lord Jesus. Not only is it a time to remember the Lord's death, but it's a time to remember the Lord's return because we have hope today as believers. Hope that when Jesus was taken down from the cross, and placed in the tomb, the third day he rose from the dead and he has risen and he has risen indeed. Jesus is alive. Amen. And because he's alive, he went back to the Father and promised that he would return. He would return for us. And he's preparing a home for us where we'll see those that have died in the Lord, some of them very close and dear to us, family members. Brothers and sisters, tonight I don't just think we might get to see them. We will see our precious loved ones in Christ again. 
But most of all, we will see Jesus when he returns in clouds of glory. That's why the Apostle Paul said, For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And that little phrase, till he comes, is exciting to me because it means that Jesus is alive. He's not in Jerusalem, he's not in the tomb. He's in glory, and he's coming again personally for you and for me to take us to be home with him forever. And then I think not only tonight are we remembering the Lord's death and the Lord's return, but the Apostle Paul says it's a time when we're to remember our own lives and remember others. And you say, well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, I believe that when we take the Lord's Supper, it can be almost a time of revival in the church. It can be a time of cleansing, of examination, of confession of our faults and our laying aside our weights and, and then getting our sins under the blood of Jesus so that we can be living right and clean. And a cleansed church is a holy church, and a holy church brings honor to the name of Jesus. Verse 27 says, Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, that word there has the idea of in an unworthy manner because the Paul, Apostle Paul had to instruct the believers because they were they were meeting together and taking the Lord's Supper in a very unworthy manner. And he had to correct that and instruct them how to do it right. You shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So it's a serious matter. Verse 28, but let a man examine himself. That is, look at your heart and be honest with God. And ask him to forgive you of any sinning. Stay clean and live right. Be filled with Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And represent Him every day in the way you live and the words you say and you speak. He says, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily in an unworthy matter, and only Jesus can make us worthy, he eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Many have died because they did not examine themselves, and they took it. They took the Lord's Supper in a very unworthy manner, or they had sin in their lives. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened or disciplined of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. And because the Lord loves us as His children, He corrects us and He disciplines us and He helps us to improve and be better. And so I challenge you tonight to just live right and enjoy your Christian life. And, and no matter what happens to us down on this earth, no matter what we're facing, our Lord and Savior Jesus is coming again. And we're going to win. And we're going to be with Him in a place that only the Spirit of God can reveal how wonderful and how beautiful it is. And it's not going to be just for a little while. We've been isolated, it seems like, and quarantined from one another for some 30 to 40 days. But in heaven, we'll never be isolated again. We'll be with our loved ones in Jesus forever. And so tonight, we remember His love for us when He died for our sins. But we also remember his eternal life he gave us. That he is coming again for us. Let me pray for you. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you for this precious time. A time to remember just really how much you love us. Corporately as a church, but individually and personally. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have that we are going to live forever in a home called heaven, free from any sorrow and tears and heartbreak and grief and disease. And perfect peace and joy. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Church for meeting with us. God bless you. Have a good night.